Hello and welcome to the brand new series. We are playing Provolution 2017. And this is a little project that I've had going on for a little while. Wanted to get it going before the new game comes out so I can sort of get a feel for how this is going to go so that I can really hit the ground running on 2018. And it's going to be a master league. And as you can see in the top left, Burton Albion is going to be the team, the Mighty Brewers. Uh, formerly my local team and really one of the, the lower rated teams in the championship so it should be a good challenge and there's the manager old Craney Crane and I mean just look at him he's a an old school type you know 442 big target man that sort of thing but maybe just maybe he can find his way towards some culture so what we're going to do is we're just going to go through, play some games, have some fun, and see what we can do. I'm going to try and keep it as realistic as possible where I can, and yeah, just try and uh, enjoy myself and see how this all pans out, ready for a series when 2018 comes out. So, without further ado, let's take a look at the team. Okay, so here's the team as it stands. As you can see, not the most talented of outfits. A couple of bright spots. Brayford uh, used to play for Burton a while ago. I think he left, uh, played for Sheffield United amongst others. He's come back. Uh, and Jamie Ward on the left, who I believe now has departed the club. They are going to be the two main players and then you've got Chris O'Grady big strong physical striker Bevan not usually the sort of striker I would look to partner I'd look to have more of a speedy player alongside but you know beggars can't be choosers at this stage Lloyd Dyer uh, former Premier League experience at right back fairly strong centre back pairing um, on the bench not much to speak of really um, and there's not at all another striker in the squad, so that's going to be something to rectify pretty early. Stephen Bywater, very experienced goalkeeper. Um, just seeing if there's any Delaney, young lad, 20 years old. Uh, right foot left back there, which I'm not keen on. Um, and then, yeah, not too much else on the bench, really. Oh, Hassan Chowdhury, what a hairstyle that is. I mean, he's probably going to be stick around for that alone. He's got a bit of pace to him. Not too bad. Lucas Aikens, uh, not the best. Matty Harness, I have no idea if that's his name or not, but I'm going to call him Matty Harness. A bit of speed, not too old. Could do a job on the right. Uh, Will Miller, I'm going to say again. No idea what the first names are. Uh, right footed, playing on the left. I'm sure he could do a job on the right as well. 20 years old, not bad, and then yeah, Chris O'Grady, Jamie Ward, Lloyd Dyer, he's left footed playing on the right, which I'm not a big fan of, but all of them are quite old. Uh, Callum Wright at centre mid, 23, that's good. Williamson again, 34, Corey 26, 29, 28, 34, and 29, so quite an old team, so I think the first port of call is going to be looking for a backup striker, and just bring in some, inject some youth into the squad. So let's have a gander and see what we can do about that, shall we? First and foremost, this is the squad sorted by overall ability. Uh, we've already got an offer for our worst player, Ben Fox, uh, 175k. Let's see what they would no. Let's see what they would. If they ninety percent. Yeah, if it's just a couple of them, you know. Bit more, can't complain. Spara, do we need this chap? He's only 57, rated. Now nah, we'll stick him on the uh, stick him on the list. We'll keep everyone else for now. So there's no more outgoings to play with just yet. But let's have a look and see who might be coming in. So I'm just having a look in my youth team and there is a cracking 
little left back here. Uh, Bill Tauzinho, which I am not going to remember at all. So I'm just going to call him Fitz, which, you know, makes sense. Seems his name is Filt. But, you know, walk under the bridge. I'm sure he'll be fine. So let's get him on board. Uh, it's going to be 112k. Granted, I don't have the most salary available, so I can't be doing too much of that. Um, none of the others really are worth signing just yet. Uh, there are a couple of strikers there, but none of them really fit exactly what I'm looking for. Maybe if there's nothing else out there that I can get with my transfer kitty, then I might have to come back to them. So let's go have a look, see who else is available. So I'm having a look through the free agents now, and I've found this chappy, R. Jarvis. Let's call him Ryan, for reasons. But he's 21 years old, but look at that finishing. I am a big fan of a poacher. He is not the slowest either. I think he would be the perfect foil for O'Grady. So I am going to try and bring this chap in. Another man I've found without a club, this chap here, R. Cromwell, and he is Rapido Rapido, which will again be another good foil, or indeed if we want to go for something different, just the raw pace. He is raw, but pace is always handy. So R. Cromwell, who knows what his name is, so let's just call him Ollie, after young Oliver Cromwell, shall we? Onto the loan market now, and we're going to try and get a couple of young lads from Premier League clubs, see if they wanted to drop down a level. Numero uno is Mason Holgate from Everton, so we will request a yearly loan for him. Second is Emerson Hindman. Uh, used to play for Fulham, now at Bournemouth. He's a bit more of a ball-playing centre midfielder, and I feel the other ones we've got at the moment are a bit more physically inclined. So, should be a bit of a uh, bit of have some silk to next to some of the steel that we have already. So we will see if he is willing to come in and join us. So a little uh, boost there from the chairman. I mean, might as well have not bothered giving me 55k onto the transfer budget. But 134,000 is always going to be welcome on the old salary. Okay, so Holgate and Hyman came back and the initial approaches were rejected. So we're going to stick another bid in for those. But Jarvis is a free agent. Looks like he's going to come to us. 100 grand annual salary. And I'm not going to turn that down with that sort of finishing. So let's bring him in and see how he manages to do for us and that is confirmed there now young Ollie Cromwell it's a transfer fee of just shy of a million I was incorrect he's not a free agent um, I'm sorry of 173,000 we do only have two strikers at the moment, three when Jarvis comes in. I mean, for that pace alone, I think he's worth it, so we're going to bring him in as well. And Fitz has also joined us, uh, and he will be our best left back already. So, as that is the case, we've got three left backs now in the squad, not needed. Delaney. He's a right footed left back, which I'm not a fan of, and we can probably get a bit of money for him as he is a young lad, so we are going to stick him on the transfer list. And Ferenczi kindly bumped up the transfer bid by nearly 30 grand, 
So, Foxy Biscuits, looks like you're on your way, son, I'm afraid. Enjoy Portugal. I'm sure the weather is going to be much better than Staffordshire. Okay, so Everton and Bournemouth have got back to me on my loan bids. They want a million pounds for Holgate, and that is too rich for my blood. We'll see if they accept any less, but I'm going to need that knocked down. But 325k for Hindman, I think that's worth it. I mean, he's only going to be a rotational player, but he does have that extra bit of ability on the ball, which is always welcome. So Everton have come back to us. Let's see what they what 941 uh, he is a good player but centre back we're already strong I don't think we need him just yet I'd like to keep that money just in case so we're going to reject that one and I think we're going to go in with the uh, the squad that we've got at the moment but it's only uh, five days until the curtain raiser against Reading, so unless anything happens before then, I will be seeing you then, but we shall see. So we are here now, opening day of the season against Reading. I did have a couple of offers for a couple of players, so I'm going to have a look at those and see what they're all about. So first one is for Williamson. 1.1 million. Now he is 34 years old. But he's a star player. He's on the way down, but I think I'm going to keep him. For that money, I'll, I'll keep him, I think. Don't need the money that badly just yet. Now I've gone off for Bevan as well. Now I have I just just get a note saying that Bevan's overall did go down. He is on the way down. I have bought in two strikers. Um, Bevan is more of a physical striker compared to the other two, but his physical contact isn't actually that great. Um, so we'll see if they want. If we get some more for him, I think I'll take it and maybe hit the market again, see if I can get another target man like striker to deputise Vera Grady when he's not available. But let's uh, have a see how these new boys all fit into the team and how the opening game is going to look. Okay, so here's the team as it's going to line up against Reading. Bar anyone being out of form or not looking sharp. So, McLaughlin in goal. Johnny Brayford at right back. Barker and Turner at centre back. New boy Fitz at left back. Lloyd Dyer on the right. Jamie Ward on the left. Callum Riley and Luke Williamson in centre mid. Chris O'Grady and Ryan Jarvis up top. Um, a bench of Bywater, McFadzian, Chowdhury, Hindman, Aikens, Miller and Cromwell. So we've got a bit of pace coming off the bench in Cromwell. Miller and Aikens are good options on the wings. Heinemann to be a bit more of a ball player. Chowdhury looks like he's full of energy. Um, yeah, and then we've got a few more options on here. We are quite set at centre mid, so I might let one of these three go. Same with centre back, might let one of these three go before the end of the window as well. But we'll see how everyone fits in. As you can see, we don't quite match up to that team that Rennie have got out of there so it might be a bit of a tough one but that is for next time so I do appreciate it's been a lot of me talking and just going through the initial part of this but what, I, what is going to happen with the uh, the actual games themselves is I'll try and put in two or three games depending on what happens sort of in between them an episode uh, I'll have some commentary on those and yeah, just sort of see how that all goes. But yeah, if you are uh, if you enjoyed this and you're looking forward to the next one, uh, don't be afraid to drop a like on the video or perhaps subscribe to see when the next one does come along. But until then, 
I have been Michael from Crane and Crane, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.